benefit, so it shouldn't evolve at all. However, uh, can give uh, a benefit to so society as uh, uh, homosexuality uh, homosexuals might um, be a able to uh, care for children while other other people are un unable to. So. Game theory is a relatively recent phenomenon, as I understand it. People didn't understand that when everyone is not focused on the same goal, you can still have better results when you have other people enabling people to focus on that goal. Yeah. Um, and that's what we understood. We're now understanding homosexuality to be throughout the animal kingdom. There are homosexuals in, in just about every species on the planet, and the homosexuals within those groups take on other roles which free up the breeders. So that would be four. Okay. Well. Huh. So, I so okay. extremism. <laughs> yeah, if I'm reading stuff. That, I mean, uh, go, so go ahead. Well, I mean, if we're Extremism as it relates to uh, like the homosexuality thing that we just finished is like uh, just look at Uganda and uh, what's going on there. Like yeah, they've been exporting religion to them. That's a good example of how religion extremism is a bad thing. Yeah, I mean they're passing legislation against homosexuals where they can be a lifetime imprisonment for repeat offenders. I mean, come on. Um, where did the, this the top-down approach for this? Like, who decided in Uganda? that we're going to start making laws against homosexuals. That seems... Rick Warren. Why does I mean, that name ring a bell? He was invited to uh, give a prayer at Obama's inaugural uh, um, ceremony. No, that crazy dude! Yes, he is a religious extremist. He's one of the Dominionists. And, and he, so funny he story, himself he was born went in the same year Uganda. as Steven Pinker. Uh, he himself went to Uganda along with other uh, members of his anti-gay association and helped, prompt, helped write this um, legislation. They're the ones who um, really pushed for it. They've since disavowed it now that their, um, their role in the matter has come to light, but um, you know, it doesn't change the fact that this came from them. We, we were literally exporting religion to Uganda. That's kind of scary. Uh, Emmanuel, another way religion affects us negatively, using tax money to organize a prayer rally with like 50,000 participants. Um, I don't know much about that story. Yeah. Obviously, using any amount of money... Well, I don't know. I'm not so sure that was tax money. Um, that was something Rick Perry did. I don't know if it was, he used campaign money for that or if it was actually tax money. I'm not sure. I know there were a lot of religious organizations involved. Um, tracing the money is probably going to be pretty difficult, but it certainly was a political figure using his political celebrity yeah. um, and I authority mean, to was... encourage people to do this. Praying yeah, for rain, by the way, if people don't know. They, I, I was just reading what Emmanuel was writing. He was actually asking people to pray to, for rain? Yes. That's amazing. Yes. In 2011, there's this dude who's asking people to pray for motherfucking rain. Like I was, I'm considering sending him an email telling him to do a rain dance as well. Yeah, it's amazing. And if you're praying, it's pretty much a rain dance. I'm guessing. And the irony is that in spite of all of this um, demonstration of devotion, um, there's actually been less rain since the prayer meeting uh, than there, were, there was last year. God is eventual. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, obviously, Matthew six five six. I don't know what that is. That's just Bible thing. <laughs> Video during a, a phone conversation like this is probably not a great idea. I'm gonna, I'm gonna air it just so people can know what we're this talking is about. Rick Perry, and I'm inviting you to join your fellow Americans in a day of prayer and fasting on behalf of our nation. As an elected leader, I'm all too aware of government's limitations when it comes to fixing things that are spiritual in nature. That's where prayer comes in. And we need it more than ever. Apparently, we need prayer more than trouble, ever. Okay, I'm going to turn that off now because that's scary. Um, 
Well, hopefully he's not gonna be president because that's that's scary. Yeah, I hope um, not. He's got my dad's vote. Woo! Rick Barry, 2012, with that Michelle vote. Bachman. Be sick. Mm. Oh yeah, GOP ticket. Rick Perry for president, Michelle Bachman as his vice. While I am moving to the North Pole and not coming back to don't move to the North border. Pole. I've still got to escape to Canada if that happens. I am. More atheists are always welcome here. I'm sure Steven Pinker would be proud of more atheists in Montreal. Honestly, we need more atheists in the U.S., but most importantly, we need more atheists to move into uh, public affairs. We have I mean, only one avowed atheist in all of our elected government. Yeah, and it's sad. Like, and um, I suppose you saw the survey that they did several years ago, where it's like, as far as getting elected, as far as trust is concerned, atheists are ranked lower than Muslims in this country. Yep. Thirty. So, Eatons. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. We ha we didn't blow up the towers. I mean, come on. We live in a country where it is not controversial for a sitting president to say, I don't think atheists should be considered patriotic, and I don't think they should be considered citizens. Thank you, George Sr. Yep. That's... That's so anti-future and anti-advancement that it hurts my brain, like... That's, that's anti-constitution. Yes. Um... Like, apparent, like, people in this country love to completely ignore the Treaty of Tripoli, um, where it said we are not founded on the Christian religion. Um, they want to ignore the First Amendment that specifically prohibits any kind of uh, religious test for office. Well, they don't, like, as far as the people I know are concerned, they don't ignore that. They re... they um, interpret it differently. Like... My dad says it's freedom to worship God in your own way, not freedom not to worship God. Um, exactly. What? It's not freedom not to worship God? So you're not allowed yeah, to there not There is no worship. freedom from religion, is what it boils down to. It's freedom of religion. You can re worship any religion you want. You can worship any religion any way you want. You do not have freedom from religion. That is the, the reinterpretation of the First Amendment. And that's what gives us the Freedom From Religion Foundation and such as that. Wow. Okay. That's Jefferson rough. specifically said, it neither um, breaks my bones nor picks my pocket for a man to declare there is no God. He's a smart dude. Kind of makes sense. Um, I want to, from here, like, now we've seen, we talked about all the bad that religious extremism would do. And my question to you guys is that is a moderate religious system, like on the scale that I was talking about before, let's say somebody's a five, so they're very moderate in their beliefs and they're not anti-evolution, they're not anti-science, um, you know, they still just believe there's a god, whatever, whatever that means, um, but they, they agree that there might not be a dude in the sky, like, doing stuff. Is that still negative for society, and I'm going to give you my opinion. I think that even a moderate position impacts society negatively because you're not fighting against the evils that the extremists are doing, and a lot of people argue that, you know, Muslims are evil because they didn't fight against the, the extremists who were, you know, doing 9-11. Yeah, precisely. They their own. Like the yeah. negative thing about the moderate uh, position is you're an, you're an enabler. You're lending credence to the extremist uh, position um, through your moderation through your uh, moderate um, position because uh, they look at you and they say all right this person isn't crazy so this whole movement isn't crazy um, like they're enablers to the extent where like if I were to say I had a friend of mine who's a crackhead and I just gave him money all the time so he could go buy his drug that's slowly killing him um, instead of, like, yeah, buy him a meal when he needs it, but don't enable him to f further his demise. Um, like, so that's the downside of the moderate position, is, like, you're lending credence to a crazy extremist position. I think it's much worse than that. They're propagating the means by which extreme extremism um, arises in part because, yeah, they're providing cover for them. 
but they're also promoting faith in an idea that they can't verify because of adherence to blind obedience. The only reason they have any reason to believe this, wow, that was redundant, um, the only reason they're believing this is because someone told them to believe, and they accepted it, and they never really found a reason to question it. it uh, playing the devil's advocate, there are some people that need this, right? They, not everybody on earth is going to be a critical thinker, which is perfectly fine, right? Well, if you Why? can't be a good good person without religion, then don't uh, become an atheist. What does what does religion provide that can't be found in any other system, either philosophy or ideology, or just people sitting down and teaching their children? You know, it's really not a good idea to hurt other people if you don't want to get hurt yourself. And taking this morality approach, like some people say, well. It gives an easy set of morals, you know, they're kind of written down and people have accepted them. Um, I'm a big fan of utilitarianism. I don't know many other philosophical approaches as well as I know utilitarianism because it seems like a very rational approach to good and bad obviously has a lot of problems too. But what do you guys think are ways that people can actually have or develop or have developed a set of morals without religion? Well, personally, I believe uh, morals arise naturally from society whenever there are two or more people involved. Because um, if you, you're going around and killing people, you're, uh, by extension, uh, uh, killing yourself. Because you put, you're putting yourself in da danger. You're threatening this, the survivability of the people around you. And yourself, yep. by extension. The, the whole idea that religion originates morality, that, that morality comes from some sort of higher power, um, is another example of religion taking something that was already there and laying claim to it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that they have any, any validity in their claim, it's just that they've taught people to associate religion and morality, therefore they are inexorably linked in people's minds. I mean, mor morality is a social development like no religion is necessary it's, you realize that if I do this thing to this person they're not going to like me very much thus I'm not going to be able to benefit from their presence or get anything they can offer me um, so I mean it's a social development you don't need God to tell you what you, what you need to do you can learn that on your own and it goes even further than that um, people look to religion as examples of altruism, where you're doing something for no perceivable benefit. But people have been doing that without religion and before religion because it promotes the general well-being. I mean, I have the mindset that I have nothing to live for beyond my death, um, so what do I do? Well, my answer is try to leave the world a better place than the way I found it it has a positive impact on the people around me, which, of course, um, has benefits while I'm around. But the fact is that if I have, have any kind of hope for immortality beyond, like, my children or, or what I write or what I say, um, I have to leave the world a better place. If I can be remembered for the good things that I did, then that's a way that, that I will continue on in people's memories. It's the only thing I have to live for. That's beautifully put, and that's something I, I, I agree with what you just said, and I wish I would have said that, because it's beautiful, and yeah. Emmanuel was saying, killing people isn't exactly good for the tribe. Uh, Christians don't rob banks because they're afraid of going to hell. Atheists don't rob banks because it's a dick thing to do. So well put, and... I had a point I was going to make. I forgot what it was. Right, if anybody has something to add, carry on. As an atheist, I am not afraid of being a dick. I don't necessarily think that statement is uh, exactly true either, because uh, we all share more or less the same uh, uh, moral standard in, inside of society. We just, well, when it comes to Christians, they just pre project their own uh, morality upon the Bible rather than deriving their, their moral, moral standards, standards from it. I think that's a really important point that religious people tend to project their perception of morality on everyone else, which is why we so often hear of, well, you're an atheist, you don't believe in anything, so why don't you just kill and rape and pillage whenever you can, whenever you think you can get away with it? It does and that's not a beneficial to 
your society. And back in the day, tribes weren't killing themselves, but they were killing other tribes because there was limited resources.